Welcome to Niv Mezet Reborn. Hope you're excited. As far as opening hand goes, yes, we're going to keep on this one. I like it. A little bit strapped on Grixis mana, but uh, we can make this work. We got Soul Ring and uh, Tendrils of Agony, and we have Yidris, the Maelstrom Wielder. And I'm really excited about Yidris. I haven't got to play with him yet in this deck. So hopefully we can find ourselves a green source. Pulse, okay. It's not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and lead off with Badlands. Let's go Soul Ring. Let's go for Is It Signet, and then we'll uh, very graciously pass the turn as we... Don't really have much else to do outside of that. All right, so we're going to go Is It Signet, and then we'll pass the turn to our opponent. We're playing Niv Mezet Reborn, flying. Whenever Niv enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. Uh, for each color pair, put one of those into your hand, put the rest on your bottom in a random order. And I would read it, but it's just like a jumble of words whenever I try to pronounce it. All right, there we go. Run into Thirst for Knowledge. At least it's going to allow us to hopefully dig a little bit deeper for another uh, green source. Let's go and lead off with Crumbling Necropolis. And I think we'll simply just go and pass the turn over to our opponent. Playing against Rune of the Hidden Realm, Vigilance, and Trample. Then for a two-mana activation, exile another target creature. Turn that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Our opponent is playing a Waste... Um, basic land in here, which is definitely an interesting build to see from them. Now, depending on what they end up going for, yeah, in response to that, let's go Soul Ring, let's go Signet, and let's go for uh, Thirst for Knowledge. So we're going to draw three cards. Hopefully, we're going to get this to sick, and then Volcanic Island and Urborg. So we need to discard two cards, and I think at this point, we'll probably get rid of his Void Slime, because that's going to be really far away, and we'll probably just go ahead, well, we might need that land drop to get down... I wouldn't mind holding on to Tendrils of Agony. Let's just go and get rid of Urborg, and then uh, we'll be able to get the land drop down for next turn for Volcanic Island. Uh, we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout-out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to get into Magic Online, whether it's Commander, Modern, Legacy, or Penny Dreadful, any of the fun Eternal Magic formats, be sure to check out mtgotraders.com. And also, shout-out to inkgaming.com. You can use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off your order and help the channel out at the same time. Hey! There we go. Our, our opponent just said in the chat that they are a friend of the channel, so I was like, all right, that's some fun. Uh, but it's going to go for Night of Autumn, and let's see, probably going to see that Soul Ring get popped. Uh, if that was me, I would choose that. And so, yeah, there we go. That, that is definitely a good choice. So uh, they're going to go for that. But yeah, shout out to inkgaming.com. You can use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off your order. Oh, there we go. We can find ourselves a green source. Uh, let's go Bloodstained Myron, just so we don't want to play around Rune Bouncing Night of Autumn the entire game. I think we might end up going for Pulse. So Let's go and crack Bloodstained Mire. We're going to grab ourselves a, uh, what is it, the Bayou. There we go. We're going to grab ourselves a Bayou. And I think at this point, we'll just, we could try to go for Yidris. That is Yidris mana. Yeah, let's let's give it a shot. Let's, let's see if we can't get some good stuff moving. Uh, I think I kind of like that. So let's go Yidris. That's going to be green and then black. So if you haven't seen this deck before, it's, it's pretty fun. It's basically just five color storm. Uh, one of the main ways that we do try to win is through a thousand year storm. And it, you know, the core concept of this deck is basically just trying to win through thousand year storm. Now it could be suited in a blue red shell a lot better, but you don't get to just storm some fun things like uh, Maelstrom Poles. Um, there is a few of the cards in here. What is it like? Uh, something like Terminate or Assassin's Trophy to just really kind of decimate the board. So there's just a lot of cool things that you can try to do with this. Ooh, we're drawn to Expansion and Explosion. Um, let's go Volcanic Island. Let's go and push in with Yidris, and let's see if we can't get this Cascade Trigger to stick in. And the cool thing, and if you hear a little bit of rustling in the background, uh, I acquired a new dog, if you didn't hear from one of my other videos, and uh, not a new dog, but we got a dog, and his name is Sturgill, and... Uh, He's uh, roughhousing right now <laughs> with a uh, little bed. So if you hear a little background noise, he's trying to set the mood for a thousand year storm. All right, so we're going to get Idris to come on through. And that's going to be the cascade trigger. And I think at this point, we just go, uh, let's go tap down some mana. And let's go for, there we go, blue. Actually, let's tap down green. And let's go for turnabout. So we're going to be able to cast turnabout. Uh, we're going to be able to untap our lands. And we'll use this last uh, red green mana right there. There we go. We're going to cascade. Let's see what we run into off of this. Now, this is not a cast. All right. Oh, <laughs> what did we hit? Oh, we hit counterflux. That's a bummer. Okay. So we're going to get to untap our lands. Let's go ahead and untap. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have a white source to get down Yidris. I mean, get down Niv Mezet just yet. So that was a little bit of a bummer. And if they've got counter magic, then if they want to stop it, that's uh, perfectly fine. We might be able to end up going Mystic Snake. Okay, so they're going to be able to counter uh, counter turnabout, 
and that's going to get rid of that, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll make that work. So it's going to get rid of, uh, and it's going to be green mana. Yeah, we're simply just going to go ahead and pass the turn over to our opponent. Oh, yeah, as far as sponsors, last but not least, I started a Patreon, so if you'd like to contribute to that, I get your name at the beginning or the ending of the credits, and there's a link down in the description below to my Patreon. And uh, also, I have a Discord. It's completely free to join the Discord, so there's a link down in the description below. So now... It is officially free time. Uh, we can have some fun. So we're on the quest for another white source. There, ho, ho, ho. Thank you, magic gods. And uh, let's go plateau. Now, we might hit another counter spell from our opponent, but I, I really do like uh, tapping out right now for trying to get niv to stick. So let's go niv -Mezzet. We're going to try to get niv to enter the battlefield. And the other cool thing about playing Storm with niv is that, you know, there's just a lot of times where if you finally find that thousand in your Storm, you really need to kind of refuel your hand with a bunch of spells to cast. All right, Poto's going to go for Beast Within on Yidris. Um, yep, that's okay. So we're going to go niv and that's not too bad. We've got Hydroid Crisis, Time Wipe, and the Prophetic Bolt. So anything else that we can do, there's no lane drop, so we're simply just going to go and pass the turn. Now, at least we do have a 6-6 clock in the air. Uh, we can start swinging in our opponent. And with Time Warp, Time Wipe, we could bounce back some of their creatures. No, excuse me. Yeah, we're going to be able to bounce Yidris back to our hand, niv it back to our hand, and go for Time Wipe. So we might end up going for that next turn, especially if they go for Rune of the Hidden Realm. But outside of the initial uh, core concept of just Thousand Year Storm, we're basically just trying to... Uh, build up a really nice value board state. You can see where we had Yidris down, and uh, you know, let's say that we have Yidris, we have Thousand Year Storm, end up getting a lot of good stuff, and now I'm playing Rope with uh, Sturgill. So if I miss something, I'm trying to keep the dog active. I kind of ran out of time. I tried to take him, I'm going to take him for a walk after this, but uh, we have some plans for tonight, and so he's kind of, it's like bring your bring your kid to work. So um, I was playing with a little rope really quick. And so Pona ends up going for Eternal Witness on Flooded Strand to kind of make sure they hit that lane drop for the turn. So I think at this point, if that's what they're going for, and I kind of like trying to stick a uh, time wipe. So let's go and push in with niv at first. It's going to be a 6-6 six, six in the air. There's nothing with reach. And the other good thing is, you know, niv refu refuels your hand for Storm. But at the same time, you know, you've got a pretty sizable commander. You know, you're looking at four swings, and that's going to be commander damage right there. So, yeah, let's try to go for this time wide. But let's bounce. Uh, no, we don't have double white. Can't go double white. So this can be one, two, three, four. We can go for Hydroid Crisis. And I think at this point, I, I don't mind going for Hydroid Crisis. So let's tap out for this. Just getting two card draw is going to be good. All right, so we're going to go Hydro Crisis, X is four, so we're going to gain two life, draw two cards. There we go, finally hitting some lands. I uh, have uh, Hydro Crisis enter the battlefield. Let's go Wooded Foothills. And once they crack that Flooded Strain, we'll crack our uh, Wooded Foothills and grab ourselves another white source. That way we don't have to run into something like Trick Bind or Squelch or something kind of counter that to activate the ability. So let's go and crack Wooded Foothills. Let's get this popped out, and at this point we're just looking, yeah, we're going to grab Sacred Foundry, because that's going to be the second white source that we need uh, for Time Wipe, so there we go. Alright, and then if our opponent is simply just cracking the fetch going rune next turn, then this Time Wipe is going to be a really good thing for us. Uh, we will still be able to at least swing in for 10 in the air, and that's going to put them down to 7, put us also at 12 total commander damage for our opponent. And then kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, outside of Thousand Year Storm, uh, we do have some pretty cool stuff in here. We have uh, Sentinel Tower. We have Aether Flux Reservoir. Um, there's just, man, I mean, there's no better feeling than playing a Storm deck. And one of the fun ways that we try to Storm is with the Cerebral Vortex. Because you can get to Storm Cerebral Vortex. You end up with uh, making your opponent draw two cards. And then it deals damage equal to the number of cards they've drawn that turn. So that uh, let's say that we Storm Cerebral uh, Vortex, you know three or four times, it's going to be four or five card draw, six card draw, and then you deal a ton of damage to your opponent. So, and then outside of that, you know, getting to storm something like Prophetic Bolt, you know, just a really nice value play, just dealing some damage and getting some card advantage. It's always good. So let's go ahead and push in for 10 in the air. Our opponent did not end up going for Rune of the Hidden Realm, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, deal some damage while we can. And if we want to, I think we can just swing in with the entire crew because we're looking at a 2-1, two, a 2-2, two, two, a 2-1. Two, and if they want to block the beast token, they can, and we'll definitely trade with one of those. Now, one thing that we do have to watch out is some sort of bounce effect from our, I was just about to say, Vincer. Um, return a permanent to its owner's hand. And let's see who, uh, what sort of creature they target with this Vincer trigger. Okay, so I'm going to send Nev Mezit back to the hand. I think at this point that's perfectly fine, because what we can do is we can go time wipe. It's going to clear all of those creatures out, and it'll make it to where Rune doesn't enter the battlefield with a really good thing. So we'll, we'll let this go on through. Uh, they'll send Niv back to our hand, and also make it a little bit easier for us to cast Niv. So uh, we've still got four in the air. we got uh, Beast Token for 3-3 three, three on the ground coming across. 
Okay, so we're going to trade with both of those creatures. It's going to get rid of Knight of Autumn and Snake. And then we're still going to end up going for this uh, this time wipe. This is going to be a good way we can bounce back. We still have the land drop two to make for the turn. And that's going to make for a really nice Hydro Crisis. So let's go time wipe. Uh, we're going to pay double white. And we're going to return Hydro Crisis back to our hand. So it's going to get rid of all of those creatures. Oh, look at that value. And then anything else, I think at this point, we'll probably end up going for it's just Goblin Electromancer. Um, that's just going to be a really safe value play. And if they've got some spot removal, they'll probably want to get rid of Goblin Electromancer because that's going to make that bolt cost four and give us a little bit of a reduced rate off the explosion or even something like Pulse. You know, being able to use Pulse for abrupt decay mana is always a good thing. Um, outside of the Thousand Year Storm, we've got uh, Niv to kind of dig a little bit deeper. I covered the towers. Um, you did see Riku is hanging around in here somewhere, so that way if we do find Riku, we can just generate a little, you're just trying to get as much overlapping synergy as possible with this deck. Alright, so we run into Treasured Find, and Treasured Find is another really fun card to storm off of that. Now as far as if we want to bring something back right now, we can bring a card, something like Turnabout might be able to, we could go Turnabout, Expansion, and Tendrils. Yeah, let's try to let's try to see if we can't stick a tendrils of agony. Yeah, let's go to shock and blood creep. We're gonna pay two life. So we're gonna go. Is it signet? Uh, let's go black and then green. We're gonna go treasured find on turnabout. That's gonna bring it back to our hand. Uh, let's add a little bit of extra mana to our mana pool. So we're gonna go for turnabout and we're gonna hold priority on this one. So we're gonna choose us to untap our lands and we're gonna pay two more and we do need. And actually, we don't really have that much. We do need to hold on to black, so we'll go one green and one red source. So we're going to go turnabout. Let's go expansion on turnabout. So we're going to pay that last blue and red mana. So we're going to be able to copy that. Uh, we're going to keep the same target as us. So we're going to be able to untap our lands. And we're going to choose land on this. There we go. We're going to untap those. Definitely going to do that. And in response to that one, we're going to make sure we have enough tendrils of agony mana and then enough for prophetic bolts. So it's going to be blue, red. I think at this point we can just, uh, we could go for Pulse, so we'll add black mana too, and then one more red source. So we're going to get to untap these lands, that's going to put us at storm count three. And then let's go one more go, let's go black, let's go Pulse on Reflector Mage. Let's go Prophetic Bolt up top to our opponent. And I think at this point, we'll simply just go and grab... Yeah, Mana Morphos would be a wonderful thing to grab. All right, so we're going to grab Mana Morphos. Put those on the bottom in any order. That's going to put us at Storm Count 5. Uh, let's go Mana Morphos. That's going to be green and then red. That's going to allow us to draw a card. And we're still just going to go double black because I think... Yeah, we should be able to close it out with Tendrils of Agony now. So we're going to target our opponent. There we go. We're going to cast six spells before that. You can see where, you know, there's a lot of times where if you can get Thousand Year Storm on the battlefield, it really does help out. But there's also other times where you can just generate enough stuff out of your hand to where you can go for a really nice Tendril of Agony. Plus, it's fun playing Five Color Storm. So, there we go. It's always fun to get a Tendrils of Agony win. A uh, huge shout out to our opponent. You know, that uh, that time wipe was a huge tempo loss for them. Um, if they get down Rune of the Hidden Realm and then go for a few other bounces with something like Mystic Snake, it's hard for us to kind of get away from that. But, Thankfully, we were able to uh, rack up some really nice stuff with Turnabout and uh, close the game out with some uh, Tendrils of Agony. So, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.